So Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen taking up the economy this week as prices increased 18 and a half percent since President Biden came into office. So I sat down with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen Wednesday where she defended her outlook on inflation. Listen to this. Well, look, inflation is down um, almost two thirds from the high uh, it reached in uh, 2022. And the trend is clearly a favorable one. Um, I wouldn't look at, expect this to be a smooth path month to month, but the trend is uh, clearly favorable. That said, um, President Biden's top priority is addressing the issue of high costs that concern so many Americans. Um, they're worried about their ability to make ends meet, and he's doing all that he can, bringing down prescription drug prices, bringing down the cost of health care, and, of course, the investments that we're making to promote renewables uh, in the United States will make energy uh, more secure and lower the cost of energy to households. In the State of the Union, the president also proposed ways to um, increase the supply of affordable housing and make housing more affordable for new home buyers. But when you talk about prices, the CPI inflation has had a three in front of it since July of last year. Why is Jamie Dimon wrong then when he's saying the worst case is stagflation? Well, I don't think we're going to see stagflation. Most forecasters believe we're on a path where inflation will come down over time. The single biggest contributor to inflation is um, housing costs. And um, we can see when we look at the market for new rental apartments that in many parts of the country, rental prices for new apartments have actually declined overall, flat to slightly down. Uh, it takes a while for that to filter into the CPI. And so um, I have every expectation that the single largest contributor to it, to inflation, is going to be moving down over this year. And that will bring the rest of it with it. So uh, you, in 2021, you, though, you did say that inflation was transitory. Do you, do you regret saying that now? Is I regret saying it was transitory. Um, it has come down, but I think transitory means uh, a few weeks or months to most most people. So under President Biden's policies from the month he came into office, um, January of 2021 to today, prices have gone up 18 and percent. I think people are feeling that and you're seeing that in the polls. Americans are seeing the cost of some goods that are important to them, like rent, um, having increased. Right. Um, many prices are well off their highs, uh, gasoline, uh, eggs, um, other things, TVs, used used cars and trucks that people buy are well off their highs. And look, as I said, President Biden knows that high costs are a burden to many American households, and it's his number one priority to do what he can to lower costs. Yeah, well off their highs, but still more than when President Biden came into office. Yesterday, I confronted the White House press secretary and what Janet Yellen told me about inflation and if the Biden administration agrees about this bumpy road. Listen. We have seen inflation go down by two thirds at, from its peak. And so I want to make sure that it is clear what she said and what the data also shows. Two-thirds from its peak. Its peak was a year and a half into President Biden's office, or into, into his term. He also canceled the Keystone Pipeline, which also sparked, and we passed $5.8 trillion in spending, which also pushes inflation. But my question is, how much longer will it be for Americans to, to then bring down all prices? So, look, because the president's unprecedented actions that he took as it relates to the oil, we saw gas prices go down. The pandemic, the supply chain, uh, what we saw Putin do in Ukraine, right, that caused inflation to increase. And in every part of what I just said, said what I just laid out, the president has taken action on. So the reaction from Case Capital Advisor founder and CEO Kenny Polcari. So, you know, blaming everyone else here. I mean, I'm going to start with the economy on this, but it seems like they are blaming everyone else other than the White House policies. What do you think? 
Well, listen, and they continue to blame COVID. I'm tired of listening to everybody point to COVID that happened now four years ago. We're past COVID. Forget that. Stop leaning on that as a reason to say. And, and Russia invading Ukraine, you know, two years ago and what it did to the price of oil. I'm tired of listening to that because I think most Americans don't feel that's the case at all at the current moment, right? They've spent too much money. Uh, prices have gone up. Yes, they've come down, but they've come down from extraordinarily high prices. But the trend is still higher, month over month. I mean, Jenny Yellen could say year over year the trend is lower, but we seem to be stuck right here at this three, three and a half percent level. And quite honestly, I think that's where we're going to be stuck. I don't think they're going to get back to two percent unless they really kill the economy. I don't really think they want to do that, especially this right. year because it's an election year. Yeah, and also if you look at the last three months, December, January, and February, the CPI inflation month over month has been increasing. So this, yeah, so the secretary says that inflation coming down will not be smooth month over month. What does that mean to you? Well, so it just means to prepare for ongoing high prices. And here's the part that also, you know, gets me, is that they talk about, you know, used car prices coming down and televisions coming down. That's great. How often are you buying a used car? You can't eat a television. You can't do, you know, what are you going to do with a television to feed your family or put a roof over your house? You cannot. It's the stuff that's really important. It's a steak, it's chicken, it's eggs, it's bacon, it's, it's food, it's utilities. It's the stuff you and I need every single day. And by the way, have you seen the, the price of oil recently? It is now above 80 and probably in the 80 to 85 range. So in fact, it has gone up and that's not yet reflected uh, in those, in the PPI the CPI. Yeah, and gas prices are inching back up, what we've seen recently, and we do not advocate eating a television. So last one on this, Kenny. No. Uh, I see uh, inflation pressures in the economy are holding, uh, holding off that rate cut. Do, do you believe now, with these inflation pressures, we could be looking at July or the end of the summer for a rate cut? I've been in the no-cut camp since since the first of the year. I don't see how they can justify cutting rates with the data being what it is. They said they've so they told us they're so data dependent, and the data remains strong. They can't be cutting rates when job growth is uh, strong, unemployment is still at historic lows, right? The earnings season and the forward guidance this year was once again strong. So there's no justification for them to say, well, you know, the economy is circling down the drain. We need to cut rates. That's not what we're seeing at all. And so I'm in the no-cut camp. I don't think it's going to be May, June, July. And then we're well in that presidential election window where they're not supposed to actually do anything up or down uh, until until that passes, right? So yeah. if anything, maybe you see something in November or December, but I'm not even in that camp until I see more data. Yeah, so let's talk about Bernie Sanders now and his four-day work week for full pay. Neil <laughs> spoke with Home Depot co-founder Ken Langone about this on Your World yesterday, where he explained who he thinks would end up paying for a shorter work week. Listen to this. A 32-hour work week raises labor costs directly 20 percent. Why? Because the eight hours they're not working, you've got to hire somebody else. Who's going to pay for it? Who always pays for it at the end? The consumer. The costs have to be passed on, or the businesses that absorb those costs will no longer be attractive for investment. Yeah, so what do you think? What will this do to smaller, large he, businesses? He's a thousand percent right, because what are you going to do? You're going to close businesses on, on the fifth day of the week, on Friday. Everything's going to be closed, and now you don't hire anybody, and everything shuts down? It's absolutely ludicrous to me that uh, that Bernie Sanders in the left, the far left, is now pushing uh, for a four-day work week. It just makes no sense. And all it does is it makes, it makes you know, it puts us as an American, uh, as a nation, kind of behind the eight ball because you don't see, you know, you don't see certainly China uh, going to a four-day work week. If anything, they're right. pushing their kids hard. They're pushing their people harder to get, to gain uh, a strength and to gain an, up, an, uh, uh, an upper hand. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Ken, so this idea that he wants to go to four day work week is mind boggling to me. <laughs> Kenny, it's always great talking with you. We're going to have to get you uh, updated there with the calculator. I see on the side of your desk on the left hand side of the screen. We are have to get you into the uh, into the 21st century here. On that. It's always fashion. Great. You know, look, I'm not <laughs> that generation. Right. You're always spot on. Thanks, Kenny. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.